Okay, so here's a problem, um, and this is one, this is first problem in this set, so we're going to look, try to find the absolute maximum moment in this beam. So we'll start off with a pretty simple uh, application. That would be two point loads. Uh, it could represent some kind of tra uh, trailer or some kind of vehicle. Uh, that's really not that important. What, what is important is that the front load is 1,200 pounds. Uh, the load to the right is 400. And again, it's hard to see right here, but there, the distance is eight feet apart. Also, the problem states that the loads are here on the right side, so the truck or this vehicle is going to travel from the right side across to the left side, so we know its uh, dimension. Now, you might remember uh, when we talked about absolute maximum moment, what you want to do is take your applied forces, whatever they are, in this case two, the first step is to find the resultant force. And that's pretty easy to do. You simply just uh, sum the forces. Now this is not equilibrium, we just want the resultant or the, e or the equal or the equivalent force. So I'm just going to take and add those up. So I've got 1,200 pounds plus uh, 400 pounds. So I know that my resultant force that would have the same effect of those is going to be 1,600 pounds. Now what we want to do is I want to find where that 1,600 pound force would be located between these two forces to create the same moment. So we're going to sum moments again too. We're not going to make them in equilibrium. I'm going to sum moments about really, let's say, this front axle. So to kind of let you see what this looks like, is, is I'll, I'll just redraw it quickly. So I've got the front one, which is 1,200 pounds, and I've got the rear one, which is 400 pounds. And now somewhere here in the middle, between them, is that equivalent force of 1,600 pounds. Now, where should that force be located to create the same effect? So maybe I'll call that distance X1, the distance from the front load, the 1,200 pounds, to that 1,600 pounds. So about this point here, the front load, I'll just call it uh, P. Let's sum moments about P. So if I sum the real moments about P, what do I get? Well, I get this eight, 400 pound force, and that's what, eight feet away. And let's say we use right hand rule for the sign convention. So about P, that would be a negative 400 pounds times eight feet. Now that moment has to be the same when I sum it for the equivalent load. So again, if I sum moments about that same point, I would now have negative 1,600 pounds times x1. And those two things have to be equal. They have to have the same effect. So all I have to do is solve for x1. What would that be? Well, 8 times 400, that's 3,200, right? And you divide 3,200 by 1,600, you get x is equal to Two. So now I know the magnitude of my resultant force and I know its relative location. Why do I care about that? Well, remember, the way this technique works for finding the absolute maximum moment is I'm going to balance each of the loads with the resultant force about the center line. So I need to know where that load is. So let's look at the first case. This would be uh, the front load. So what I like to do is draw my beam, uh, create the center line. So the beam is 30 feet long, so if I cut it in half, it should be 15 and 15. By the way, I'm not really cutting it in half. I'm just uh, locating the center line. Um, over here, I'll have a pin at A, which gives me a reaction, and a roller at B, which gives me a vertical reaction. 
Now, remember, what I want to do now is about the center line, I want to, at equal distances, I want to put the 1,200 pound force and the 1,600 pound force. We, we just found X1, that this is what, how many feet apart are they? Two. So that means if I put my 1,200 pound force here at one foot, and then one foot to the right would be my 1,600 pound equivalent force. So see, I am balancing about the center line, equidistant, the first force and the resultant. And then how many feet back to the 400 pound force? Well, it's eight feet total, and I've already used two, so it'd be six feet back to the 400 pound force. So I think that shows what I mean by balancing the first load with the resultant load about the center line, kind of being equidistant. That's what the technique, you remember the last time we went through a little derivation, that's what we found out. That was the position that created the maximum moment. And then, of course, where do we look? We look for the moment right there. So I'll call that moment one. So now what you want to do is you want to cut the structure there and decide, do I want to look at the left side or the right side? Well, if you look at the left side, only thing I'm going to have is what? My reaction at A. If I look at the right side, what do I have? I've got either my equivalent force or the real force and the reaction at B. So there's a little bit more on the right side. So I think the left side is the best way to go. Are there three forces on this beam or two? There's, there's two, and then there's an equivalent single force. Right, so when I find the reaction at A, I'm not going to use all these forces. I'm either going to use the green force or the real forces, not both. And the green force would be at the green distance? Well, we know where the green force is. It's one foot to the right of the center line. Okay. And we know where this force is. It's one foot to the left of the center line. And we're cutting it right there. So this little distance that we're cutting it is going to be uh, 14 feet. But I can find the moment there pretty easy. All I need to know is the reaction at A. So how do I find the reaction at A? Well, I would sum moments at B. So using right-hand rule, I'm going to sum moments at B. Just like Mr. Bella said, we have to now make a choice. Do I want to find that moment as a function of the real loads, which in this case there's two, but there could be three, four, five, six. We don't know how many loads are in the vehicle. Or the equivalent, the single equivalent force. I go for the single equivalent force. So about B, my equivalent force creates positive moment. The force is 1,600 pounds. And what's the distance from B to that force? 14. And then I have A creating negative moment, I'm sorry, the reaction at AY, and its distance between A and B is 30 feet. So I should be able to solve for AY. You guys are going to have to help me with that. It's 746.5 746. pounds. Can I see that? So then I'm going to come and cut my structure there. This is 14 feet. And we are now looking for that moment. I'll call it moment one. And then we found our reaction already. It was 746.7 pounds. That's a pretty easy equation to write, right? Just some moments at the cut. <coughs> And what do we have? Well, 
this internal moment right here, what is that, positive or negative? That's positive, so that's M1. And then this reaction force over here at A is creating negative moment. So the force is 746.7 pounds. And what's the moment arm? 14. So what is that moment? 10,453.8. That's a lot of numbers. Uh, and that would be pound feet. So that is one possible location and value for the absolute maximum moment. But we have to do it what? Again. What would be the second case? Well, I now have to balance this load with the other force. So let me uh, slide this over here. I know that looks kind of weird. Uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and slide it up like that. Let me just give me a second to put a little tape on there to hold it down so it won't flap around. And let's write uh, case two. So just like before, I'll draw the structure. Again, we'll find the center line of the structure. And we know that's 15 feet, 15 feet. Uh, we have a reaction at A. It's a pin. Call that AY. We'll have a reaction at B at a roller. Call that by. Now this time um, we're going to balance the 400 pound force, so that way we'll have the 400 pound force here. Now the distance between the 400 pound force and my equivalent force was six feet, right? So we split that in half, we'll get three feet and three feet. And then two feet in front of that is the front force that was 1,200 pounds. See, so if you compare that to the previous problem, I'm now about the center line balancing the re resultant force and the second force. If I had three, four, five loads, I'd continue that process. But now I'm looking for the moment here, under that load. I'll call that moment two. So now if I cut the structure here, you have to decide, do I want to work the left side, which would have the reaction at A, and either the 1,200 pound force or the equivalent force, or do I want to do the left side, which just has reaction at by. I think you see you probably want to go want to go this way to the right side. So I need to find by. How do I do that? Well I'll sum moments about A. So I'm going to sum moments about A and again I get to choose whether I use all my real forces or just the equivalent force. And I think Every time it's going to be just the equivalent force. So with that said, um, about A, that equivalent force creates a negative moment. So the force is 1,600 pounds. And the distance from A to here, well, distance from A to the center line is 15, but it's 3 feet to the right, so that would be 12 feet. Then the reaction at B creates positive moment, and it has a moment arm the distance between A and B is 30 feet. So what is BY? Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head. 640? So that's 640 pounds for that reaction. So now I'm going to cut to the right. 
I know from the center line to B is 15, but I lop off that 3, so this segment will be 12 feet long. I'll have my reaction at BY, which we just solved, of 640 pounds. And I'll assume positive moment, I'll call it 2, at the cut. So now I just have to find that moment. So I will sum moments at the cut, assuming right-hand rule, make sure everything's in equilibrium. So looking at my internal moment with this sign convention, that would be negative. About the cut, the 640 creates positive moment. So the force is 640, and the distance is 12. So what's the moment at 2? 7,680. So now I have two things to look at, M1 and M2. So let's look back. That was my value for M1, 10,000 at this position, or 7,000 at this position. You can easily see which one is the highest. So the maximum moment in this beam caused by this set of loads is going to be 10,453. Yeah. And that will be pound feet. And that's going to be at what point? Well, remember it was here. So that will be 14 feet from A. So I'll just write 14 feet from A. So I not only have magnitude, <coughs> but I have position. Is that the position of the front wheel? No, that's the position in the beam of the maximum moment. It happens to occur when the front wheel and the resultant force are balanced equidistance about the center line and it occurs under the front wheel. So that's how we find the position. And that, remember, as a structural engineer, that's what you want. You want to know what the absolute maximum moment of the structure is. And if you've got a bunch of, if you've got this vehicle going across your beam, um, and we could easily expand that to one of the Ashto H series trucks, which would be a regular truck, a regular type of vehicle. Then you can you could figure out what's the maximum in the beam, and that's what you would design for. You design your beam to withstand that maximum moment. How do you cut it where you cut? That's part of the procedure. So we 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 blew through it in class last time, um, which was how many days ago now? Yeah, like forever ago, right? Last Thursday. So um, it was a complicated analysis, but what it came up was is one of the initial, um, I guess, theorems of it is that it's going to occur under one of the loads, and we wanted to find out where that was. So the process went through it and found out that it would happen when they were equidistant about the center line. That's how that all came out. So we don't have to, if you just accept that, we did prove it, uh, then you just apply it. So it's, it's not a very, as you can see, it's not a very complicated calculation. Finding the resultant in its location is not too bad. And then depending on how many forces you have, in this case two, you have just two cases to check. Once you do that, the reactions are pretty simple. You cut and find the moment. You won't find a simpler problem to find the moment interior than that. So it's really this pretty simple applications of the stuff that we've been doing. And, but you get something really very, very useful. I now know exactly in the beam <clears throat> where the maximum moment occurs and what its value is. So when you're doing the cases, you always cut it at the real load that you're balancing with the result of. Okay.